Hey guys, what is up? It's me, the Gaming Powerhouse, and we're here with the second part of the Chrysler DLC overview and full rebuild. So as you see, the Mercedes are still chilling. That will be probably tomorrow. If you're well, if you're watching this on the day I release, I'm releasing these two Chryslers on the 25th. I'll probably get to the next one, which is probably gonna be the Pagoda on the 26th, and we will go from there. But the last video, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description. We finished the Chrysler Cordoba, very nice car, very modest, uh, 268 with all performance parts as far as horsepower goes. We're going to sell this one. Actually, no, I just remember we're not going to sell it. I'll show you what it would sell for, though. It would sell for 91243 but because I don't have one yet, I'm actually going to store this one in my parking garage. I'm going to double check to make sure I have space for the 300C when I'm done as well. I do. There's the Cordoba right there. There's my personal 560. SEC. The only Mercedes that's going to go in there after I'm done will be the 500E because I have the other three in various places around. So, now that that one is gone, quote unquote, it's really in my garage, but we're going to be working on the 300C SRT8. Now, I'm going to check for this one because I feel like maybe the SRT8 would have some stuff, but I'm going to double check. I doubt it. Yeah, I figure most of the DLC cars can't have custom parts because of um, the the rules of using the license and all that stuff. So this one's in pretty bad condition. It, as you can see, it definitely needs some work, but we're gonna get it done today. That is the goal for this episode, to get this thing fully rebuilt, to get that nice Hemi, the new Hemi engine. We got a new Hemi in the game, which is awesome. Cause the only one we had before was from the Hellcat, I'm pretty sure. So now we're gonna repair anything we can repair here. And again, if you haven't heard me say this before, the reason you hear a lot of clicking there is because I made my uh, enter, like the, the accept stuff, spacebar. So I just spam spacebar whenever I have to do stuff. So by all the glassware and headlights, plus the front left door, and we'll have to get license plates as well. So let's do that really quick. Body spot, we'll put in a 300C. That should get the stuff. I need the front left door and all the glassware. And you don't have to buy all this stuff, you could go like part picking or you can keep the stock ones if they're not that damaged. But since I have plenty of credits to spare, I'm definitely going to be um, buying all new parts for this thing. Let's get some plates. We put California plates. I already put the plate 300C on um, the CO because that's what it looks like. It looks like a 300C, but now that the 300C is actually in the game, um, I'm probably just going to put dub. And I might make a dub build out of this. I haven't decided yet. I might put some white walls, make it cool looking. I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see what happens when I get to that part, which is gonna be pretty soon. But you know, I have some time to think about it. What I want to have in my garage, whether I want that kind of atrocity. I already have a lowrider in my garage, so maybe not. But before I do anything else, I'm not sure, well, I'm gonna remove the interior. I really like the interior in this car. I'm definitely gonna keep the interior stock. Maybe I'll put ah, I could make a drag build out of this too. I don't know. I might do that. I'm gonna move these over so I can get that out of the way. That'll definitely boost the value of the car. I'm kind of curious how much it boosts it actually. So I'm gonna check the value now. Right, so it's what, 59,381? Okay, now watch this. I, I spend $1,100, right? 1,000 for the welder, 100 for the interior. 63,220, which is like a, a lot, it's definitely more than I spent on actually doing it. So, because it puts the frame and interior condition up to 100, which is really nice. So, with that, I'm actually going to reinstall all the bodywork. I'm really debating if I want to, you know what I'm going to do here for a minute? Oh wait, I forgot, I, I didn't, the interior does not get repaired by interior. I'm going to buy, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a partial race build. So I'm going to go seat, I'm going to get one of these, the racing seat, and I'm going to get one replacement for the Chrysler seat. Uh, will that be farther back? Is this 300? There it is, yep. So we're going to do that and that. So we have one normal seat and then one of those. I'm going to get a different steering wheel and I'm going to buy the bench. So I need a bench. 300C, there it is. And then for the steering wheel, I have an idea of what I want to use. I'm thinking for this build, since it's, I'm trying to make it kind of like a racy build, but also kind of a muscly feel, 
Um, hmm. I kind of like the Reptilla wheel. Yeah, we're going to put the Reptilla wheel in there. Make it kind of a nice custom, not the same as everyone else kind of thing. So we're going to put the standard seat as passenger, the race seat for the driver, the Reptilla wheel, and then we're going to install the parts back on. No custom parts for this guy, unfortunately. I think I might make a drag build out of this one. Put some slicks on the tires. Hopefully the engine makes good power. It should. I mean, it, isn't, what is it? it already makes 431 factory. And there will be custom parts, despite the fact that there won't be a whole lot of them, I'm doubting. I doubt they would put custom parts on one of the Chryslers and not the other one. The Cordoba had no custom parts for the V8 OHBA it had. So, I'm going to assume is the same case for this car but you never know i could get lucky all right so if i did that right the body should be good yep beautiful all right i'm gonna see if i need to leak the oil out of this thing or not i might not need to because it's pretty low quality but it was an auction so it's always possible nope we're good so let's get these rims off i'm definitely going to keep the stock bmc rims i think i'm going to do that but i'm going to put some slicks on them instead Alrighty, let's just go over to here, yeah, because it currently has sport tires, and they look good, so I'm going to put some slicks on here. Oh, you know what I'm going to do really quick, actually? I'm going to see how much space I had to work with as far as, like, arch distance. So I'm going to put one on the front and on the back to compare. I'll probably make the front ones pretty thin, as drag tires usually are, or I'll just keep them stock. Uh, the back ones, I can probably go, like... I want to poke a little bit, so maybe two out on the back, two, like, no, I don't know, like, like, what the number is, two notches of width, so 20, I assume. And then the front, I'll probably keep stock as far as size goes. Alright, so, we're going to do, so we have two 55, 45, 20s at the moment. So we're going to put some 275, um... I'm going to experiment with the rim size at the back, because usually the back ones are bigger tires, smaller rim. So I'm definitely going to get 275s. I'm going to try to do... Okay, where's the slicks? I'm going to try to do something here. So I'm going to go 15s. Definitely with the 275. And then I'm trying to make the profile... It was 45, so maybe you're doing like a 65 award. I probably should have that vintage tire to test it. Oh well. Let's try it. Let's buy some 15 inch. I'm gonna buy basics. I don't have to get super expensive rims. Uh, I'll just buy one 15 inch for now. Let's see how that goes. I won't set. Oh, what the heck? Did I, did I, did I install those? Did I just forget to sell them. Yeah, I guess I did. Okay. That's funny. Alright, let's see what this guy looks like when I'm done. For the front, I'll keep it on stock, so it'll be a 245, 45, 20, but it'll just be a different rim. Well, no, stock rim, sorry. But it should be interesting. I might keep the stock rims on the front and then put the drag kind of rims on the back. We'll have to see what we're, what we're thinking of here. So let's see what this one looks like on the back. Hopefully I did this kind of right. Might have to get the profile lower. Actually I need a bigger profile. I like the rim size. I'm gonna get a bigger profile. I'm just gonna take this rim off. This is a little this will, make, this will make this video a little bit longer, but since it's my custom car, I wanna make it right. So I had 265.15. Let's try. Definitely 275, I like that look. Let's try maybe like a 75? Why not? Can't hurt, right? Uh, there it is. So we're definitely selling these, we don't want those. It's either this or something like a 70. It might be a 70. I do like how that looks, it looks really good for like a drag radial almost. And I'm putting, I'm, I'm gonna put the, the labeled ones on the front, because that's usually how they go. They usually have the labeled ones on the front and the plain ones on the back. I might as well get some 245, 45, 20 ones on the front really quick. 
Oh. There we go. 245, 45. I do a 40 actually. Alright, let's see what this thing looks like. I really want this thing to look kind of like a beast when it when it drives. So. Oh, that is perfect! I love how that looks. Alright, beautiful. We got the size we want. 275, 75, 15 is definitely the move. So now we need to buy ribs. So, uh, oh, I have to uninstall. Oh, there we go. Sell these old ones. So I need one more of those tires. Let me buy that really quick. Beautiful. Okay, so now for rims. I want to keep the stock ones in the front, right? So I have to buy two of those. On 20s. But then for the back, I'm thinking a similar style of rim, but like in a black. So if I can find like a big spoke, but like as a black rim. Maybe in the retro. Kind of like these. Yeah, I'll get two of these. Those look good. Okay, so let's install this stuff. Cool, cool. Here are some of these. So there's a front one going. We'll double check to make sure these actually look good. Let me get a back one going really quick so I can see what it looks like. Look how good that looks. Oh, yes. This is going to be awesome. And if I did this right, if that tire is small enough, it might even have a rake to it, which would be really cool. You can't really make a rake, or you can't change the ride height very easily, but if you make one of the tires bigger than the other, I think usually it gives it a rake, so we'll have to find out. Let's put this front one on, see what it looks like. It won't have a rake on here, obviously, but when it's on the ground, it might, so we'll have to see. Alright, let's see what this back one in comparison. Oh yeah, I think that will definitely have some kind of a rake when it's sitting. That looks very good. I like that a lot. Alright. Bounce that last one, take these off for now. See, this will be a longer episode because it's a custom custom build, but I promise you it'll be worth watching. I'm going to do the drag strip, maybe even tune the gears, if the gearbox allows me. Is it standard V8? Yes! I can change the gear settings. That's beautiful. I think the last one I forgot. There it is, all ready for me. Beautiful, beautiful. Put those in here for the time being. Awesome. Alright, let's get the suspension reworked, because it is not looking too hot right now. All right, here comes the tedious part. I may not talk a lot during this. It's one of those days where it's kind of like, gotta get stuff done, but I also want to help uh, you guys see this new content right away. So hopefully it's still an enjoyable experience. So if I don't talk, you know, it happens. I'll try to keep talking, keep things interesting, but you never know what's gonna happen really. So I'm thinking after I finish this and obviously the Mercedes series, I'm just going to go through a lot of the cars that I don't have finished yet. It's so like the standard cars. I have a lot of the DLC cars finished and I'll go through those eventually, but I'll probably start by going through all the cars I haven't finished. My goal is to own one of every car and have it fully built up. And also I build things as stock engines when I keep them. So when I sell them, it's a different story. I don't, I sometimes put engine swaps in there, but. So after I finish this series and I finish the Mercedes series, I will probably revert to doing cars I don't own yet and I'll film each one and just probably, I might have it just as like a rebuild, like with a very minimal talking, but we'll see how things play out. I might change my mind. Alright, there's the inner tie rod, knuckle, cross member, steering rack, 
sway bar. Exhaust pipes. Oh my lord. That went all the way back. OHVM. I don't think that, I didn't see that part in the shop, so I'm guessing we might not have parts for this engine either. I mean, at least custom parts. There's always parts for an engine because it always has like pistons, that kind of stuff, like the standard stuff. I'm just super glad it has a standard gearbox, like it put custom gears on it. That makes me a very happy boy. Alright, that's looking good. That looks really stuck out. I don't know why. Alright, over here, we got the fuel pump and the fuel tank. Oh, we got this back end. Okay, this is always fun to try to deal with. It's the drive axle back end. Rear hub. That. Get that. 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 Lots of, lots of bolts to get on these guys. There's the bushing. It's hiding. This guy unbolted, that upper arm. Hopefully a lot of this stuff gets fixed when I go to fix it, but you never really know with this stuff. A lot of it I will have to replace, but hopefully not. Like the ones that I can fix do get fixed. I like when that happens. All right, switch over to this side. Now we're making some progress. guy, that guy, and that one. Alright, let's see what we got to work with here. Hopefully a lot of this stuff gets repaired. Alright, let's see what we got. So we're definitely going to need the front shocks. I'll do that one first. So we need that, that, and that. Nice to see those modern ones, not the double wishbone things. Sell the old ones. Get rid of some orders. Alright, we're gonna need a fuel pump. I'll buy that really quick while that spring is going. We're gonna need let's see, let's see, we'll check. They, I might have missed it, but I kind of doubt they have it. OHVM, let's check it out. Yeah, these are just parts that have the letter M next to anything that says OHV. Yep, no custom parts there, that's unfortunate. Exhaust. There's the front exhaust pipe, and then the rear ones. Where are those gonna be? There they are. Go to exhaust. No custom parts there, unfortunately, but we can get the gearbox, which makes me very happy. Be able to make some drag gears out of this thing. Get the V8, there it is. Replace that bad boy. And now, check what else we need. So, we need. Two discs, two ventilated, and four pads. This is the standard shop. And luckily for this one, unlike the last build, I can actually tell what's broken because it's yellow and not green. Uh, we need a knuckle A, sway bar, and a fuel tank. Leave the fuel tank first. It's generally about there. Oh, I was actually really close. Is it down or up? I think it's down. Yep, there it is. Then we need knuckle A and a sway bar, standard. There's the knuckle, sway bar, fuel tank. Inners and outers. 
tie rods, of course. I always say it just enters and outers. I'm used to that. There's that. Uh, two shock A's, two caps, two springs. Excuse me. Alright. And that's that done. What else do we need? Rear sway bar B. And how many bushings? Let's count really quick. Um, that's looking like 16 and 8. And rear sway bar B. Alright, 16 of those guys, 8 of these guys. It's a lot of parts. Got it done. Don't want to sell too many, that's why I slow down there. Alright, 2 A links, 2 end links, 4 hub bearings, and 2 caps. There we go. Yeah, you get four of the bearings when you have the rear drive axles and not the uh, brake. Oh, no. No, it made me sell a hub three. I didn't realize. It, it, it jumps up when it hits the bottom line. I always forget it does that. That should be everything though now. So let us reinstall whatever we got. Fuel tank, pump for it, get some of these bushings going. Get the sway bar, get that muffler in, get the housing. that on there. Anything else over here? No, just the hub. Alright, beautiful. Get that, 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 and that. And, oh, I forgot to grab the wheels. That's why I was like, why are there no rims? I forgot to grab them. There we go. I took the big one on, not the small one. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Switch over to the other side. Hopefully. Come on now. There it is. Get these bushings in. I always forget the bushings if I don't do them right away. That's why I always do them first. Alright, let's get this guy. This guy. And this bushing. The shock. That. on now. You know what I wanted, don't lie. You wanted to revert back to the standard rim. That's why I did that. Oh wait, no, I can't put that on yet. I'm stupid. There we go. I forgot. I had to wait on that stuff until I put the engine back in. Which also means I might need to take this off. Just for now. I don't, I might not need to, but I don't risk having to take it off again. So much hassle. Alright. Got our new front shocks. Things are looking good. I'm hoping that we can put a decent amount of power behind that, the Hemi. That way that drag bill can actually be kind of cool. Oh, I missed that. I was like, what am I missing, man? There we go. Alright, get these. Where's the other one? Oh, it's hiding. There it is.
Now we're getting somewhere. And the last wheel. Alright, that should be suspension work done for the time being. We'll put these four things into the warehouse. We'll lower this guy, get the engine crane over here, pull her out. See what we got. Oh wow, it's a big boy. Let's see if we can get some of this stuff going here. Oh, it has the standard air filter, so that's a little bonus in the power there. Where's the battery? Where's the battery hiding? It's gotta have one. Right? What the heck? Oh, it's back there. That's odd. I've never seen a battery in the back on a car like this. Is it actually there in the real car? Now that's the question. Well, I'll go back to that after I'm done with this, I guess. Did anything fail to fix? Oh yeah, housing housing fan B fan one. There it is. And then go to the performance shop. Buy the standard air filter. Put all that stuff back in. that taken care of let's go to the back because the engine they wanted to put the battery in the back I guess it's fine whatever I'm not mad at all just kidding I'm not actually mad it's just kind of out of my way all right let's do that close the trunk up all right let's see what we got to work with here Ooh, I like all the stuff on this thing. There's a lot of stuff. And there seems to be a lot of stuff you can make into uh, performance parts, so that's always a plus. That is a big intake manifold, isn't it? Jeez, look at that thing. It's huge. Now I can get the fuel filter. Get the other gear. Belt tensioner. Standard alternator, good to see. I4B, I think that's uh, one that has a custom part, hopefully. Big water pump again. Timing cover. <clears throat> it's funny how this is a modern engine, but it still manages to have. Um, OHV style engine, which is usually known for it being on older cars. So yeah, none of these OHV M's will have custom parts, but everything else we can probably find something for. Probably, I say probably, not always, but hopefully we can. Oh, and this is the one with the push rods are like... Oh, and this one has double the spark plugs, so that's going to be some bonus power there. Has eight spark plugs per head, so 16. Which is always nice. That means more power boosts. I forgot how much boost each custom spark plug gives. Maybe like 0.15, but double the amount would mean that instead of getting, what would that be? Eight standard would be like 1.2%, but then this would be 2.4%. If, I, if it's 0.15, I think it is, but I'm not for sure on that. All right. 
Alrighty, get the second head off now. And this is OHVG, so I didn't look at OHVG. That might have custom parts. I didn't check on that. I know OHVM doesn't, though, so. We'll have to check. The oil filter off, too. This all, this all, the, all this drivetrain stuff will have custom parts, which is nice. And of course, all the pistons are custom. Get all these guys off first, and we just take the pistons out. Nice and simple. how one of the pistons is still silver and the other one's just black. I'm assuming it's supposed to be like oil or something like that, right? Something along those lines. Grime. Alright, let's go fix what we can and then check the performance shop. I see a lot of different kinds of OHP parts in here. OHP-G, OHP-K, OHP-C was somewhere in there. Yeah, so we have some parts we can work with. Let's see if they have an OHP-G. Ah, you see? Well, actually, no, they don't, but they do have stuff we can use, for sure. I have to look at all of it individually. Okay. Alternator, camshaft, OHVC, and then the usual. <clears throat> All right, so we got that, we got that, we got that, we got that, and we also got that. But let's see if they have those OHVC. They don't have those. Okay, fuel filter, fuel rails, and then, oh, they're not just the OHPG ones, damn. Fuel filter, fuel rails, fuel rails. They don't have the, oh, they don't have ignition coils, damn it. That sucks. That's too bad. Okay, well, so we got those. No intake manifold. Piston OHVCs, we have eight of those. And then the I4B steering pump, if they have it. I think they do. Yep, right there. So we have that going for us. Sixteen spark plugs, that's always a plus. One point one three, so it's close. And then Throttle for the V8 O3K, they do have that. That's another extra 1%. Alright, so now here's the bicep stock. We need a belt tensioner, a cam gear, and a clutch release bearing, fully V8 OHV. Let's get this out of here. Into here, that belt tensioner, cam gear. Is it? Was it here? Couldn't remember. And then crankshaft LHV. Um, two idler A's and then eight of these coil VHOHPTs. So, there. At least you bet they didn't have the transformation coils. Uh, V8 filter, eight piston ring C's. stuff for this one because has the custom pistons. There's that. Two rocker arms and a serpentine belt.
Alrighty. And timing chain F, 16 valve push rod F, and a standard pump pulley. All right. All right, now we're ready to go. What did I just do? Oh, I just saved the game. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. A uh, little handbrake, I guess. Sorry about that. Uh, we're already in a long video. Just made it longer. My fault. This is probably looking like a 40 to 45 minute video. Jesus. Oh! Can you tell I'm not focusing? <laughs> we'll get her done though. No worries. A little bit of a little bit of a small break there. They just look so good though. Okay, now we can rebuild. Sorry about that. Make the video a little longer. Not like I'm worrying about runtime. Alright, distance installed. Here we go. I'm hoping this will be more than the last one as far as percent increase. It'll be more power for sure, because the stock power is higher than the boosted power of the Cordova. But, I mean, maybe we can get 600 out of it. That'd be nice. I'd love 700, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. That's over 50% of an increase. Well, maybe not. 50% increase, I don't know what the base power was, but it'd be like 200 something if it was 50%. So, we'll just have to see what these parts give us. Turn it back over. Cam gear, alternator, timing chain, timing cover. Water pump. Custom. Yeah, the double of spark plugs will give us a nice little boost. I would have checked my thing, see if I had any custom parts, but since... I mean, the uh, I have a warehouse full of like bonus parts from the crates, but I know I wouldn't have had any because this part, these parts just came out. So I, there's no way I would have had any custom parts. I haven't gotten a crate anything recently. But in the future, if I do get them, I will install them, and I'll probably have like yearly to bi yearly garage update videos to see what how the power's doing if I've changed them at all, that kind of thing. Because all my cars have stock engines, so when I get a unique part, I can put it in there. That is a really big intake manifold, though. Custom throttle, I'm glad we got that. And the fuel rail. There's only one fuel rail? What? Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, hold on. I'm like, there's definitely two. There we go. I was like, wait, what? Am I missing anything? Nope, that looks good. There's the full rebuild of that. Oh, I had to put the crane back because I quit the game, right? 
Alrighty, let's install this thing. Is it looking good? Looks good to me. Spill that thing with oil. And then we will see what kind of stuff we get out of it. Put this stuff back in though. The custom gearbox to get those gear ratios down. Those wheels look so beefy. I love that. Get the exhaust in there. Gearbox. Alright, starter. And the drive shaft. Last but certainly not least, none of this would be possible without it. Alright, that should be all 100s if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Move that over to the paint shop. Alright. You know I have to do it. I'm sorry. There's not going to be a delivery out there. Yeah, no. I have to do it. It's a drag build. You gotta. Alright, let's see how much power this thing makes. I think it does actually have a rake. Which is really awesome. Let's check. Yep, it definitely has a rake. That is so dope. Okay. Alright, so we are at 431 stock. 50% increase in foot is at like 650 or so. So let's see what we get. I'm hoping at least 600. That's what I want. 582, you know what? I will take it. It's actually less of an increase than the other engine, but it's more power. So I'll take 562 out of a new engine. I'm wondering, does this thing have swaps? It doesn't have swaps. So this is the most power you can put in this car. Alright. Instead of going to the airport, I'm actually going to take this to the, uh, the speed test. And we're going to do... I'm not going to do any gearing as far as this video goes. I might show you if I do in like the next video. But we're definitely going to go to the speed track. There it is. See what we can pull with this thing. I'm hoping it's decent. I mean, the gearing might not be great at all, but I'm not going to edit it until... I might not even edit it. We'll see. Alright, I'm going to get some custom views. Look at, look, at the, I mean, look at the rake. Just look how mean that looks, dude. That is amazing. Okay, here we go. Well, it's getting a decent speed. 0 to 60 is 4 seconds flat. That's not bad at all. 160. 170. Not bad. Dude, at 4 seconds, 0 to 60, in a car that only has less than 600 horsepower, that isn't terrible at all. I really like that. That's dope swag. Alright. So, I do have to actually go to the airfield because... That's how I get my thumbnail. Shh. But let's send it over there really quick. Come on, come on. I don't want to take too much longer. It's already at 45 minutes, basically. Go there. All right. So that has been the Chrysler 300C, as well as that is the end of the Chrysler rebuild series. There's only two Chryslers, so you've seen both. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this little break of the Mercedes to showcase the new car. I certainly did. It's nice to work on some American D8s and to make a drag build because why the hell else would you want to do it? So uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked it, please leave a like below. I really appreciate all that. Um, comment any ideas or suggestions for what I should do next after the Mercedes series. I'm definitely going to do a garage tour, and I'll probably do the cars I'm missing as well. But, um, yeah. So, all that stuff. If you're new, of course, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And, as always, once we're done, I gotta go.